Ryan, are you on your phone again? No, Judy. I'm putting dates in my calendar. Dates for what? I have lots of dates, and we'll fill you in on those dates next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Hughes Water Gardens, and later in the show, we'll be talking with Eamon Hughes about water lilies and lotus. And Ryan, what about those dates you're talking about? So Judy, there's lots of dates mm. coming up. So tomorrow night by midnight is your last chance to enter to win a Garden Gallery $200 gift card. Next weekend is our last episode of Garden Time. And July 1st is the last Garden Time magazine, but there is a Garden Time podcast coming up. So for all that information, you can go to the Garden Time website at gardentime.tv. But coming up on the show today, we'll be talking to Jan about the tips of the month. We'll also be stopping at Garland Nursery and show you plants that can warm up your deck. But coming up first, it's all about salvias. Well, Garden Time loves to come to Blooming Junction and talk with Ron because you're always this wonderful selection and we love walking around here because you discover so much. It's really a huge place. It is. Um, a lot of people come in uh, for the first time and comment on that, that they didn't know that this was all here. Um, we actually have five acres of, of sales uh, grounds here, so there's quite a bit. And what a selection of salvias. You know, you think of a couple salvias that we all love favorites, but you have even more favorites to get. Right, and this is just, uh, you know, a sample of, of what we have. Um, you know, they come in all, all different sizes, different colors, um, culinary, you know, um, obviously uh, uh, pollinators. Um, Everyone loves salvias. You know, and I think there's something for everyone here. So let's start with the culinary because we'll, t we'll talk food. Yeah, here we have the culinary salvias, a sage, um, you know, a, a central cooking ingredient. Um, this is a nice one in particular because it comes in a nice variegated uh, yellow. This is La Creme. Um, most uh, gardeners and cooks have uh, sage growing in their, uh, their garden. Um, these are also culinary, but um, you know, frankly, these I think are grown for uh, the pollinators sure. um, and um, you know, the, uh, the foliage, the yeah. scent of the foliage. This is my absolute favorite, favorite, the pineapple sage. It just smells like a pineapple. It it's does. Great for fruit wonderful. salads and things. Very nice. And then let's move into maybe the annuals. Yeah, these are the less hardy, um, but equally desirable. Um, ones. This uh, this is a cute little one. This is perfect for a pot uh, summer jewel. Nice. Um, you know, the thing with salvias is to keep them in bloom, you want a deadhead. Okay. Um, and when you deadhead, take them back as far as you can. These are so easy when they're when they're spent. They just snap right off. And full sun for all the salvias. Full sun. Nice. And uh, this is another sweet little one for a pot. Um, this is Mirage Deep Salmon. And sometimes salmon are hard to find in a nice blooming plant, so that's it, really pretty. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of an unusual color. And this red one is so nice, Free Speech, another Free new speech. one on the market. That's it great. Is. Um, this is a particularly pretty one here. This is Stormy Pink. Wow, that's beautiful. Two-tone pink. Love that color. And you said for pollinators, so which pollinators would that attract? Um, hummingbirds, oh. uh, bees, uh, particularly with some of the other salvias, but uh, hummingbirds love these, um, butterflies, things like that. Nice. And what about this This one, one is Oriental Dove. This is a beautiful one. Uh, this purple and, I don't know, lavender, White edge, yeah, something very like pretty. That. And then you go to a nice bold red. That's pretty. Yeah, and these uh, typically get taller than your usual, usual salvias. These are um, fast growing. So if you're looking for something, you know, two to almost three feet in the, wow. in, in the garden, uh, these particular ones are great. Um, this one, you know, black and bloom, uh, this is great. Um, these are beautiful here, the skyscraper series, beautiful. the skyscraper orange. Look at the stem color too, that's so pretty, very different. Yeah, and like I said, very fast growing. You get a lot of growth in one season. Sometimes perennials, they don't kick in until the second season. 
Um, but mm. these do great the first year. Very nice. And then back to these blues again. Look at that kind of purple blue. And yeah, red. this is a nice one because it's got such nice fat flowers. This is uh, Mystic Spires. Wow. And oh, wait, we've got a pink is, one. Look um, at that one. Yeah, Eveline. And that's so different, like little hooks. Those are really pretty. Yeah, these ones really have um, uh, some defined whorls on them. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Those are great. So different. And these are kind of the, <clears throat> the old-fashioned ones, the Nemorosos. Right, right. Um, these are great uh, pollinators. Uh, bees are attracted to these. Um, in particular, um, this is just a beautiful color blue. There's a blue hill. And then what about deer? A lot of us have deer problems. Do you think that they would browse these? Uh, not the Nomorosas, no. They don't like those. Um, and definitely not the culinary. Right, not the culinary. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know exactly about these. I think these, um, they would definitely browse. Okay. Because they, they don't have the scent. Oh, okay. Um, that, uh, so that foliage scent is what kind of deters right, them. Right, exactly. Definitely. Um, this is a beautiful pink here, 16 candles. Um, this little one in the front is called Little Kisses, Aww. and it's kind of a nod to um, Hot Lips. Hot Lips. Oh, fun! Yeah. But for a that's smaller a garden one. or smaller pot, right? And I think that's what's great about salvias too. It's like it would fit any kind of garden or even a patio. It really does. You can have salvias anywhere. Um, there's always a place for them. They're beautiful. Yeah. Well, you know, this is just a small part of the salvia collection, but really blooming advantage, what you see on every pot, is because they're grown here, right at, down the street at your facility. And they're really a wonderful grower, and they have a fantastic selection. Stop out at Blooming Junction, see Ron and the staff, and get some salvias for your garden this year. Thanks so much, Ron. Thank you. Garden Time's Incredible Edibles. I'm down here at Bauman Farm and Garden. I'm with Brian. Brian, yeah. it's Father's Day weekend. Yes. It's June and it's strawberry season. As a uh, ode to our, my father, um, we give every dad on the Saturday before Father's Day free strawberry shortcakes. This is his favorite berry of all time. Um, you can always expect that at dad's house when we head over. And today only, free strawberry yes. shortcake for all dads. And it's and it's June. It's been a little delayed, so we have yes. been waiting for the strawberries. Oh my gosh. I have not had any yet, so I know some are going to go home with me, but it's they exciting. look delicious. And it's been, you know, a little bit of sunshine. They're finally starting to sweeten up. It's great. It's the first of berry season, and this is the first one. So I know they look delicious. And we're also, you know, we got to mention, mm -hmm. we're standing in front of a new area. We completely remodeled our parking lot. Everybody was kind of like, Brian, you're taking out <laughs> yeah, the right. garden. <laughs> well, we're putting in a brand new garden and a new space for you to come out and enjoy with your family. In fact, next Saturday is going to be our grand opening. We're going to be pouring okay. cider out here, bring the family out, come in the yard, play some cornhole, hang out at Bauman Farms. Excellent. And so make sure you come down today yes, to get your sorry. strawberries for dad yes and visit you throughout the season come down check out the new space and visit all the great things they have going on down here at bauman farm so brian Thank, is always thanks. a pleasure to be down here it's time for berries that's what you <laughs> since 1982 the wall has been making local gardens beautiful naturally whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for summer at Al's Garden and Home. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmuir Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once a decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent the Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information and we'll see you in Europe. I'm down here at Hughes Water Gardens. I'm with Eamon. 
Eamon, we are in this amazing house with your tropical yeah. water lilies and your lotus. Yeah. And the coloring on these plants is phenomenal. It is. Can it's you, unbelievable. Can you actually grow these in the Northwest? You can grow these in the Northwest. This year, you know, we're a bit cool. You know, you yeah. have to put them out a bit later. But once your pond temperature gets up to about 70 degrees, you can move them outside for the, for, for the summer. Yeah, cause, I mean, you're looking at, you know, just the coloring of the blooms or just colors you don't see in a lot of or plants. Or the leaf. Or you the have, leaf well, this is called it. margination on the leaf, uh, that mottling. And even if there are no blooms, the plant still looks like spectacular in there. And you had mentioned the bud has those little speckles on it. It's just right. very, very pretty. So how would somebody care care for this? You know, it does need to be protected in the, in the wintertime? Well, in the winter, you'd want to bring it to your garage, okay. you know, and then you can let it, you know, sit there for the winter and then bring it out again in the summer. You okay. know. But uh, it really only bloom in our climate from about June through end of September. Okay, yeah. which, you and know, if you have a bloom like that, that's, still, yeah. that's a lot of spectacular. And you don't need a pond for these. You can actually grow these in a water bowl. Oh, really? Some of the smaller varieties. One as large as, as this one, you couldn't, but there are smaller varieties that you could do in a small, maybe 18 inch, two foot. And they bloom two or three blooms a day all oh, wow. summer. They're very floriferous. Yeah. And then, you know, in the wintertime, they would need to be in the bowl in the water also, or do they? Stay? No, yeah, they have to be in the, and yeah. then move into your garage so they're out of the frost. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, lotus is another oh, one. That's, now, lotus are actually hardy. People don't realize that the lotus is a hardy plant. And uh, it's hardy to zone four, which is Chicago. Wow, really? But the difficulty in the northwest is they need a warm water in the summer. So okay. in Chicago, it's 95 during the day and it's 94 at night. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Here, we typically drop down to 57 degrees at night. So they need warm. Uh, so, uh, so are there tricks that you can do to, for warming the water? There are tricks. What we recommend people do, if you don't have a shallow pool that really does heat up into 75, 80 degrees all summer, you can do it in a water bowl. Okay. And to extend the flowering, what, what I recommend people do, just get a small aquarium heater, okay, just yeah. a mi mini one, plug that in. It'll use very little power, and then that'll bring the temperature up to about 80 degrees, and then you'll get a lot of flower on it. Gotcha. Yeah. And then when winter time is it you know kind of another one you need to move in or can you leave it? No, you can leave, you can leave it out all winter. Uh, you will have to divide it every couple of years, which okay. means you're going to end up with ten or twenty of them. But right. sometimes right. that's not <laughs> bad. Right. But but I mean the color we can have a look now at some of the close up of the flowers. That would be a good thing to right. do. Right. Yeah. Because so you start. Yeah. Let's take take a look at you know because the inside of a, a flower is you know just as spectacular. Th this as was a new variety. I got some seeds out of China, and it's just spectacular. You know, you have that. And the other interesting thing is for children to see this, anyone who knew Mercury as a child, <laughs> water just beads on it. Oh, that's so cool. It, you can't wet the leaves. It's a fascinating thing. And they're using that technology now in clothing. Oh, really? They, they've worked down the nanofibers on this. They're doing that in clothing now to do it. And it, it looks like there's, you know, lot, lots of different, you know, blooms. Lots of different know, colors. Doubles and singles and... This is a truly spectacular larger one. It's almost like a large peony. Isn't it? Yeah. And then you have that seed pod in the center. You'll, people may recognize that from floral designs. Yes. They have the dried seed yes. pods. And those little bumps on that are the actual seeds. And there's that big, big. Yeah, just, just the leaves <laughs> on their own is, is pretty cool. It's fascinating. You know, so if you're doing, you know, looking for something different for your pond or to put on your patio, yeah. you know, wanting to do a large, large bowl and have this tropical Look, you can you know definitely make sure you come down to Hughes Water Gardens, visit with Eamon, yeah. visit with your, your staff, you know, learn all about you know the lotuses and the lilies, yeah. you know, pick up these tropical rare things or get the stuff that you need for your everyday pond. Every day. Thank right. you. So, so Eamon, it's always a pleasure to be down here and to see such cool flowers. Thank so you for thanks coming for by. Us. Take care. We have some tips for you today so that you can spray safely in your garden this year. A good tip is to spray just where you mean to spray and not any of the ornamentals. And also walk backwards so that you're not walking through the area that you've just put down the spray. Also, make sure that you spray on a day with low wind and that rain is not in the forecast. It's also while you're spraying, you wanna be safe. You wanna make sure you wear some protective eyewear you know, wear some rubber gloves to keep it off your hands, and also wear a mask so you're not inhaling any fumes or anything that might be airborne. 
And then when you're all done, make sure you dispose of those properly and then clean your hands and clean your clothes so you don't contaminate anything else. It also is good to label your sprayer tank. We've labeled this for weed killer only so that you only want to use the sprayer tank for weed killer and not any other kind of spray. So we hope these tips are helped you become more successful in your spray. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, where our passion for plants has kept us rooted in this incredible community. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, but through it all, we've remained family owned and operated, dedicated to providing our neighbors the largest selection of the highest quality plants Portland has to offer. With hundreds of new plants arriving each week, you're guaranteed to find something exciting and unique. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. I'm with Jan McNeilan today, and so Jan, we're still talking about cool wet weather. It's crazy. I know, mid-June, mid-June. It's nice to be in a greenhouse because it's actually warm and dry, but, yeah. and I see all your vegetables, so. Well, they're not gotta... all there. I did put some in. I put Excellent. the tomatillos in, I put some of the tomatoes in, and I was doing it and pouring down rain <laughs> and decided that I was cold and wet to the bone and stopped. But then I went out the next day to see if the rain like knocked over everything I tried to plant. Yeah. But so far so good, but it's uh, it's a crazy, crazy year. So be patient, but you can still put them in. Don't yeah. worry, you can still there's put starts, them in. There's starts, you know, there's lettuce starts and cucumber starts and whatever. Um, so, you know, just keep going, right. do the best you can. Yeah, of course. So you heard it from Jan, get out there. <laughs> and then what about strawberries? Everybody loves strawberries and they're late or they're not here, so. Well, some places are doing fine with their strawberries. So find somebody <laughs> who's got a lot of strawberries and go for that. Because right now, mine are usually, by the time you see the first bloom, it's about 21 days before you have fruit, ripe fruit. Um, but then this year, it's not like that right, at all. Right. Mine are just sort of hard little yellow bullets as such, and uh, so they'll ripen, yeah. but so, uh, finding strawberries at a roadside stand in June this year may be harder than it's been right, in the past. Right. So be patient again, sure, and just wait. Sure. And also pollination, I think, has been affected mm -hmm. uh, by this hard rain. A lot of our fruit trees, uh, plants were pummeled by the rain, so we may have less pollination. I still have, and I have Asian pears and apples, and they're doing okay, but don't be surprised. Uh, and then also, June is the time normally that we have dro a June drop with apples if they're not pollinated. You just open them up and see if there's any seeds in the chamber, and if there aren't, then the reason it dropped is because it's not pollinated. So it's nothing that you did. Nope. It's really, that's the whole uh, biology of a fruit yep. tree. Yep, yep. definitely. Ac actually, yeah. And also, we might want to look at the lemon. Let's again. go outside. Come on, the sun's out for a minute. We need <laughs> yeah, to go outside. Let's do it. Oh, but there's so much blooming in your garden. There's still things to enjoy. Well, sure, sure. Uh, All right, I was so going to pick a, a, a bouquet, and then it was raining so hard, I thought, well, <laughs> not drying off. Well, you saw this last month. It was pretty... Pretty sad. Pretty it sad, nice. but it's, uh, you know, I've been fertilizing mm -hmm. like crazy and put it outside and said, go for it. Yeah, and the insects, <laughs> luck. you look like you've done something with the insects, so it's doing fine. Well, I d haven't done anything. Oh. I just pruned it back and fertilized it, so here it is. So Jan, remind us who, who is the original owner of this lemon tree. Sally Nowak yeah. from Seal Rock. <laughs> Seal Rock, Oregon, south of Newport. Tried to get rid of this 
pug eating <laughs> lemon that um, I'm not ever going to let her forget. <laughs> and you've enjoyed it all these years. We ha well, we've enjoyed its notoriety. There we go. Thank you, Sally and Michael, for the lemon. And then I brought the Datura out of mm -hmm. the greenhouse, oh, and it's happy. It, uh, it had about 40 blooms on it over the winter, ah. which is crazy. But now it's kind of turning yellow, and um, I'll fertilize again, and then it'll bloom like crazy. Excellent. Hey, Jan, Ryan is holding a leaf, and so could you tell us what that is? <laughs> it's a rhubarb leaf. Get out. It's huge. I know. The stalks <laughs> on it are like two inches around, or across, and all I do for the rhubarb, it's in one raised bed, and I put on uh, ammonia sulfate sprinkle, and it's just like putting a big bag of manure on it. It's just a lot of nitrogen, and that's all. You're not w looking for flowers. You just want the fruit. So there you have it. You can make bird baths and all sorts of other stuff. <laughs> and rhubarb pie. And rhubarb. <laughs> or rhubarb cake. And rhubarb cake. Yeah. Well, I just want to give you a big hug. And so we've enjoyed so much all the years with you. It's been so much fun meeting you. And it has. And getting all the information every month. And I know everybody has enjoyed it at home, all of our fans and viewers. and. It's just been wonderful. That's a great opportunity for me to stay home. You guys come and see me, <laughs> and we walk around and talk about plants. I yep. mean, what? how much more fun can that be? Exactly. And exactly. good lifelong friends. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. And that's what gardening's all about. You have your friends, and you have your garden, and you enjoy life. Yep. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. I'm down here at Garland Nursery. I'm with Lee. Lee, we all want a sense of tropical and warmth. And the weather hasn't quite been you know, supplying that, but we can get that feeling from plants. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to look forward to, to putting some tropical spirit into our patios and landscapes. That's <laughs> yes, because we do need it. So, so you want me to start yeah, let's telling start, you about you, some you of got, these things? Because you know, it's just looking at it, it's a very pleasing color palette yeah. and some really cool textures and some really cool fun things and you know for the most part they're almost all hardy I think right here. yeah I think uh, coarse textures and warm colors are just the just the spirit for this summer yeah so, it, ma it makes me feel all cozy and so, so I'll start I'll start <laughs> yeah, on going yeah, let, let's get going okay we're gonna start down in the, the right hand corner yep. we've got Peruvian lily yep. which is also Alstroemeria mm -hmm. it likes uh, sun it'll bloom all summer long my understanding is instead of uh, when, when you deadhead you actually pull the whole stem out to yes. make it repeat bloom yes so and there's some you know great colors that oh, come, yeah. come in these uh, kind of a rainbow of yeah, you know, yellows and oranges and pinks and purples all and, sorts of colors yeah, yeah and it's a nice long bloomer next to that we have the new zealand rock lily which this is a new plant for us here and i am very excited about this one i'm going to plant it in my yard and see how it does yeah it does want a break from the sun in the afternoon and just the dusty look of it is awesome and, and i can't wait to see and the it's flowers. surprising you know we're, we're sitting here touching and feeling it it's not stiff like a regular grass that you'd get. It's very yeah. soft. Yeah. 
It's, it's cool. I'm, that one might be finding a way in my home, too. <laughs> <laughs> Next to that, we've got golf ball pittosporum, yeah. which I absolutely love the color of this plant. This is a full sun to part shade plant. It'll get three or four feet tall and stays, as the name says, pretty darn round. Right. So nice. not a lot of pruning necessary. The black stems really complement the, sh yes. the, the light colored foliage and works great in a tropical landscape. Yeah. It's a very neat, tidy yeah. plant, never green. Yeah. Um, we'll jump up to the one behind it right here. We've got canna lily and it's a uh, Tropicana black and it is hardy. It'll take full sun to part shade. It'll grow in moist conditions, no problem. In, uh, in a hot dry spot, you're going to want to get it some water in yes. order for it to perform. Gets a, a, a hot orange flower in the summer. Yeah, and I like the, the foliage on this being the black. You know, we've, the regular Tropicana has been around a long time. Yeah. You know, the nice dark foliage is a great contrast. Yes. Well. And then great you got a real color. cool, big, leafy guy. What's that one? Yeah, so this is a Ligularia called uh, Last Dance. And it is definitely a shade plant. It's not going to yeah. take much sun, and it also likes lots of water in the summer. So if you let it dry out, it's going to sort of tell you about it pretty quickly. And it blooms also. Blooms yellow flowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of mid-summer yeah. yellow flowers. And just a great kind of thick, uh, tropical big leaf to it. Yeah, I like it. It's a nice, it's a nice contrast and nice and shiny. And this guy, I'm in love with this hydrangea. Yeah, that was a hydrangea that I think just came out like maybe two years ago. It's called Fire Island and it's part of the Serenade series of, or no, Coastal Serenade, I believe is what it is, yeah. series of hydrangeas. And I just absolutely love the, the ruffly flowers with the white and kind of hot pinkish red. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a stunner. Uh, afternoon shade again on this one, right? But hardy and uh, does great in the ground. It'll be with you know you'll water it when you water the ligularia. You'll probably want to water the hydrangea as well. Yeah, and I'll let you know when it will stand. Yes, when you exactly. But it, re <laughs> it bounces right back. And then a, a really pretty hookera down down front there. Yeah, most people know about the hookeras, the wonderful coral bells, and this one is called uh, Carnival Watermelon, and I like it just because it pulls in all these warm uh, warm it summer does. colors into it. So yeah, and the hookeras are nice for that year round. Yep. Color. Yep. And that one will take that one will take more sun than a lot of the hookeras, but you're still not going to want to just blast it. Right. And in this, you know, for a great contrast and another foliage. Yeah, honey bush. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a fun one. It's going to get like four or five feet tall. It's late coming up, so uh, some of you that maybe they're not coming out of the ground as much yet uh, have have faith. They will come out, and they're pretty hardy, uh, and you know, take full sun to part shade. Uh, really cool texture. Uh, dahlia. That's, there's lots of dahlias. I just right. picked that one out because it went with a color scheme. Right, and that's the nice thing about yeah. some of these plants. When you have a lot of different colors, like your hookeras and your, your alstroemerias and your dahlias, yeah. you can kind of you know, tailor your color scheme to fit in with all of them. Absolutely. And then this guy here, I love the bold Yeah, so that's an elephant ear, and that is one that's actually uh, hardier than most. So I believe it is a zone 7 plant. And it, I thought it was a shade plant. I started looking at it, and apparently it wants the sun. Can, so I think that amount. darkens it up. And so that's a, a good, versatile plant to give you a, a broad, big texture in your garden. Yeah, and I think on a lot of the allocations, you know, keep them, you know, in the wintertime, they want a little drier feet, so not yeah. real wet, because they can rot out. But yeah. yeah, just the bold, bold statement of this. And then you're kind of the pinnacle. Yeah, the Man Mandevilla vine is awesome for a summer vine. It is not hardy, but it's worth planting anyway. <laughs> right. You know, put it on a pole or a trellis, and it's going to bloom all summer long and give you that great tropical color. Yeah, and this color. is, you know, just a stunning, stunning red. And also another one that comes in, in different colors. Yes, lots of different and colors for this one. So, you know, Lee, it's just, you know, a great mix of colors and textures. And it's, you know, some things you can do for sun and some for shade. So yep. you can still, regardless of where you are in your yard, still have that kind of that tropical warm yeah warm vibe. and i'm ready to go sit on the patio <laughs> I, I, I am definitely too so it's it's been a spring but y'all you guys down here at garland nursery have a great selection of plant material you know something that you fit in for any area of your yard you know you guys have you know the landscape staff here that will help you design and put any of this together yeah. Thanks, Ryan. So if you're looking for something different, make sure you come down to Garland Nursery, visit their staff. You can go to the, our website, you know, gardentime.tv, and we can click you over to Garland's page. But make sure you come down and take the tour and pick up something new and different for you. So thanks for having us. Thank you.
Tram is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. Tram products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Tram for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmere Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once a decade Floriade Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. You know, over the years, Garden Time has interviewed so many people, and we don't always get to revisit them. Well, today we are revisiting Zeba Theldon, and so, <laughs> you know, we so enjoyed that interview so many years ago, oh, and yes. just four years ago, but it's so fun to meet with you again. So kind of for the folks at home, if you can kind of tell us, like, what, what do you do? Sure. Hi, I am a nature illustrator. I am an artist, and right now I'm doing more scientific nature illustrations of insects, which you see here as examples. And I also teach classes, I do workshops, I teach private lessons, and then I exhibit my own work in different kinds of galleries and museums, both here in the United States and across the world. And you're an author, because she has a book coming up and we'll talk about that later, but exactly. we were so just enthusiastic about your illustrations, because you don't see too many artists get these fine details of insects. Mm -hmm, exactly. It's interesting to me how insects are perceived. You know, a lot of times we, we see them flitting around in our gardens, um, but also just the way that, that some of them are really appreciated and some of them are detested or we're afraid of <laughs> right, them right. Or, um, or we use them for, for products like honey or um, things that we need in our, you know, um, in our economy. And what I really wanted with this book was to be able to, to show the insects in just a, in a beautiful light so that people can really take the time to explore them and learn about them. And for me, on a, on a more conservation level, the more that we, we see them from afar, it's more difficult to understand and appreciate them. Mm -hmm. And when we look really closely, it's amazing how much more connection there can be. And in, the, in this book, it's really nice to be able to take that time and, and draw and paint and illustrate to appreciate what we have and to make that connection. Uh, and you know, I think as gardeners, we go out in our garden and sometimes we do see them as enemies, but then we do see them, the appreciation of them because what caterpillar is that? This is actually uh, the Spurge hawk moth. And we have another hawk moth here and they're just incredible creatures. They're so beautiful. And what's really amazing is that one of the things that I didn't realize while I was illustrating this is um, until I illustrated it, is that these caterpillars, they actually have 12 eyes. Oh, that is unusual. <laughs> and you would think that they would be able to see really well, right. but in fact, they're just judging light. So anytime you see a caterpillar kind of go up on its, on its um, uh, show its kind of uh, thoracic, thoracic legs and look around, it's just judging the light to figure out where it needs Aww, to go. That is cool. And so sometimes illustrating can really help me understand 
more about what it's like to be a different species. Right. And I think you um you kind of beg us to go in our garden and see things differently and maybe bring a sketchbook because I think that's that could be so important for us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so we see things in a different light. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When you're in your garden, it's so lovely to be able to to just spend time with the flowers and spend time with actually your neighbors. These are the, <laughs> sure. these are the plants and the animals that are, that are sharing your space and to be able to, to enjoy them and appreciate them. So this is also beautiful and you have to tell us about this book coming up. Yes, I'm very excited about it. So the book itself is um, titled The Butterfly Artist and it is really giving students a time to fill in the gaps, to really learn about the foundation of creating each of these pieces, and that they're really just built up in layers, simple layers that are, that are possible to create. And then you create this amazing artwork, and it's going into publication, so I'm actually still working on it, I'm finishing up now, and it will actually be available in January of 2024. Ah, well, something so to look forward to. But in the meantime, take a sketchbook out in your garden. You know, you start small, you can get bigger later, but you know, I think that you have given us that permission to start and start and do it. And I think that that is really um, what we all need. Yeah. And just hold our hand and, and just, just go for it. Exactly, I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have any other questions, please go to Ziba's website. We'll have that link on Garden Time. You can see a lot of our artwork and see about classes going on and what's going on with this amazing artist. Thank you so much for meeting with us. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm down here in the test gardens with Kevin Vaughn. And Kevin, we know you've over the years of being this breeder extraordinaire of Semper Byron's, but you breed lots of other things too. Oh, for yeah. instance, iris. Oh, yes. No, no. Nothing with pollen is safe in my yard, so, <laughs> but these have been um, something actually I played with as a child in Massachusetts, and now that I'm back in iris growing country here in Oregon, I can play with them again, and it's been such fun, so. Right, and these are not your, you know, we're used to, you know, like the big, tall, bearded iris in the, in the Northwest, but these, it's a, it's a different story with these. That's right. The, the dwarf and median irises are bearded iris, like the tall bearded. They have a beard on the falls like the tall bearded but they're much smaller and so and they and they start to bloom very early in fact here in in my garden the miniature dwarfs which is the smallest ones up to eight inches tall start blooming in march and they bloom for about ooh, a month to six weeks and then the next size up the standard dwarfs which are eight to 16 inches tall start blooming they bloom again for about oh probably three or four weeks and then the next stage up are the intermediates, miniature talls, and border irises that are all 16 to 27 inches tall, but have different size flowers, different size stems, and different times, times okay. of bloom. So uh, by growing dwarf and median iris though, you can have bloom for probably two to three months, which is very good, you know? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a nice long yeah. bloom time. You know, and people don't seem to know about these. They're like a you know, people know about tall bearded iris. Right. We've all been to Shriners in May and seen the glorious blooms there. Right. And, you know, they're very lovely plants. But, you know, it, um, most Americans have a much smaller garden now. And so the dwarf and median irises fit in more with the, the new American landscape. You can stick a clump of these dwarf irises almost in anywhere. Right. They're very vigorous. They're very hardy. They were bred from an iris called iris pumila that grows wild in the Alps. Oh, wow. So it's very, so the, we're talking a plant that can survive minus 30 Fahrenheit. Right. Very hardy. And so that pumila parent has made these hybrids much more hardy as well and very vigorous. They also, you get lots of bloom in a small area. So like this clump here, it was just a couple of rhizomes planted last year and it's already a little clump Right. All of its own. So. Right. Because, you know, sometimes on those tall bearded, you have a lot of, lot of foliage and then some flower up top. But, you right. know, the compact ha habit is, is great with these. And I find that the tall bearded are a little more fussy. They don't want to be mixed in with other perennials as easily as these guys. Whereas some of these, you can put them in the mixed perennial board, even put mulch on them. They don't seem to care. Right. They're just fine. And they can take the water needs that, you know, some other perennials around them? or you, you Yeah. Know? I mean, I, I tend not to give them 
as much as probably a daylily might get. Right. But uh, so run run them on the dryers. dryers yeah. Side. So like things like um, I grow a lot of these with penstemon. Penstemon like a, a fairly uh, fairly dry soil right. and drainage. So yeah, they and these irises also want some drainage. So I grow them in raised beds like this one here, and they're really happy. So, so when you're breeding and crossing, what are you looking for for traits in a in an iris? Okay, so. Um, first of all, uh, the plant has to be good. So like this, this particular seedling here, I'm very happy with because, uh, as I said, I just planted one rhizome of it last year. I already have a clump, so it's yeah. a vigorous grower. That means in someone else's yard, it's also going to be a happy right. camper. Uh, the flowers have to be pretty, I mean. Right. So I'm looking for ruffled petals, really good intense colors and something that we haven't seen before maybe right like like this one um there was an older one that was a navy blue uh it was about the same size but this one has a black spot on the falls in addition to that navy blue color right. so here's a new little twist this one has more ruffles it's a little bit better plant all of this information you actually have a new book out right yeah so I was feeling bad for these guys because, you know, they just don't get the publicity that the big ones right. do. So, and there never has been a book on, on these guys. So uh, I sat down a couple years ago and penned out a book and it should be out, uh, I think now July. Everything's, everything's been COVID affected. Yeah, right, exactly. Including this book, which was print, could be printed in China. And so that's a problem these days when, right. when China's closed down. And so uh, the delay has made it... Uh, uh, should be out in July now rather than okay. this month. So. And you know, somebody that that wants to pre-order it and get their get their hands on a copy for it. Right. And, uh, where, so, where can they go to? Yes, Amazon is selling it, so okay. you, you can get there. Uh, they're taking pre-orders already. So. Yeah. And then, what is the title of the book? It's called Dwarf and Median Irises, Jewels of the Iris World, and they really are jewels. I mean, and and. and sort of unknown jewels right now right. too. So. so if you're looking for something different and new in the iris world and glean all of this great information that Kevin has, make sure you go check out and get a copy of the book for your own growing pleasures and start looking for these great varieties to start showing up in the marketplace. So Kevin, it's always a pleasure to be down here and to see all of these amazing things that are yet to come. Thanks so Thank much, Ryan. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. You can use water wisely this summer with these simple tips. Periodically, check your watering system to make sure it is working correctly. Tighten hose connections and adjust sprinklers to water plants and not the pavement. Give your lawn and garden a deep soak twice weekly instead of watering daily. Skip the fertilizer until the fall and mow your lawn less often. Taller grass holds moisture in longer between waterings. Get more water-wise gardening tips at regionalh2o.org. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. Well, we have had a really crazy spring. It's been cool and wet, but we still need to talk about water. I'm with Bonnie from the Regional Water Providers Consortium. And so, Bonnie, we've come and talked to you every year about watering. And this year, we're really not watering. Not yet, anyways, <laughs> right? It's been a really wet spring. 
And it's so nice to have natural water. I mean, we save on our resources and we don't have to be pulling hoses, but we really need to be conscious of water. So do you think that it's, it's now June, but should we start watering? Not yet, <laughs> you know, unless you have new plantings or you have really sandy soil, you might need to water because of course the rainstorms that we've been having, you know, there could be some in, in one area and then sure. a neighbor could not have it. So check your soil. Right, right, because that water still might be down into the soil levels. And then what do you guys have to help us? Because I love being a part of that subscription. Yeah, so we have the weekly watering number. We send it out each Thursday um, from April until the middle of uh, October. And we send it via text or email. And we'll tell you how much to water. And that's really helpful because as we move into the watering season, this is really a great time to conserve. And then we'll tell you how much to water during the summer. And then you can start to back it off as we get to the end of the summer as well when we head into fall and our plants go into dormancy. Right, and so, and there's other tips that you can give us too, as gardeners that we can, it's not just about watering, it's about protecting that water once it's in. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the best things that you can do while you're waiting to water <laughs> is make sure to add some mulch to your garden. You know, that needs at bay, but it'll also help the moisture that's in the soil stay in the soil longer. That is great. And then what about too, about all the mechanics of watering? Because that's a big thing too. Yeah, absolutely. So I always like to tell people, you know, well, we're waiting to water. Um, make sure that your watering system's in tip top shape, right? It's just gonna go and get a summer workout. So make sure that those hoses, you know, the connections are tightened, make sure they're in good condition. Um, our watering systems, if you have an in-ground system, is gonna run during the night or very early in the morning. Most of us are in bed. So make sure to run it during the day, once a month during the watering season, and make sure that it's watering the, the plants that you want and not the pavement, or um, you might have plants that need to be trimmed a little bit back so that the spray can get to where it needs to go. I think that's great to be preventative like that because you wanna make sure in case we get into really warm weather that you're ready to go um, just, just like that. So everything is not gonna be um, su uh, susceptible to any kind of damage. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one last thing that I would say is make sure that you create a watering schedule, right? So we recommend at, on average established plants should be watered once, maybe twice a week. And you want to make sure that you're getting the, that water down deep into the soil. So, you know, pay attention to how the water is going into your soil. Um, and then use that watering schedule and the weekly watering number. You should be good to go. You know, those are always great tips. We've learned so much over the years from Bonnie and all the staff here. Um, but we need to um, show everybody your parking strip that we had visited just a few years ago. So let's go out to the front of the house. All right, sounds good. So Bonnie, we were here in 2020, at right at the beginning of COVID, and you were just planting this parking strip. And just a short time later, look at this. It's just so beautiful and full. It is, it's, it's grown exponentially <laughs> over the last couple of summers. And what's great about this is it's doing exactly what I wanted it to, to do. So I don't have an in-ground sprinkler system. So I have to drag the hose oh. out here when I'm going to water it. And so I actually, really even last summer, only watered it three or four times. Oh, wow. That is amazing. And it's so colorful. And I bet in every season it looks different, different things are going on. And it's just such an addition to your home and to your whole neighborhood. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're really happy with it. You know, I just, I'm smiling because we've had so many good times with you guys and with all the people behind us. This is all the crew that we've interviewed over the last years from the Regional Water Providers Consortium. They brought all the information to you, the viewers, and educated us all about our water and how wonderful it is. And it's such a wonderful thing that we have to our um, use and how we need to help use it wisely. And so Bonnie, how, where are the other information that we can get that will keep on even though Garden Time isn't going to be with us every week. Sure, so you can go to regionalh2o.org and we have the weekly watering number there as well as tips and resources including 14 how-to videos on how to use water wisely in your garden and home. Yeah, so you know that information is there for you to use and really go to it and sign up for that weekly watering schedule because it's going to help you this year and every year. Thanks so much to you and thanks so much to everybody. Thank you.
find everything you need for summer at Al's Garden and Home. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading, state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Hey everybody, Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden. It's strawberry season on the farm and we've come up with a new idea I wanted to share with you. These are our strawberry freezer jam kits. There's exactly the right amount of strawberries, exactly the right amount of sugar, one lemon, and of course, that one pack of pectin. The instructions are right on the side, but we have them printed out. But better than that, on our YouTube page, my mom goes through a step-by-step -step process of exactly how to make freezer jam. I make a lot of these videos, but that is our number one video, and my mom always hangs that over my head. Head on over to our YouTube page, check it out, and come out to Bowman Farms because now is the time to make your strawberry freezer jam. Judy, what are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the GardenTime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. Well, I'm out here with Eric G from around the house. Eric, it is finally springtime. We can finally move outside. And some of us may have the point that our decks maybe need a little help. And I think you have some tips for that. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, decks traditionally last about 15 years in our area, even with good maintenance. With less than good maintenance, of course, it doesn't last that long. Right. So really coming up with some good products out there now that you can put down on the deck that'll last three, four, five times as long as that if you do it correctly. Right, because you know, here in the Northwest, we have a lot of weather. We got the sun, we got the rain, moisture, I mean, a little of everything. And it's, you know, it needs some maintenance. Oh yeah, and we, we beat it up here, especially here in the Pacific Northwest, yeah. because it gets everything, plus there's tree sap, everything else, pets, all the normal stuff that you do on that deck. Right, and so you just, you know, we're standing on a new deck that you just put in. So what are, what is the material that we're standing on? So this is actually a composite deck, and this is what I really like with composites these days. This is actually made by Moisture Shield. What I like about this product that's different than any of the other composite decks is this actually reflects heat. So if you walk out on the bare feet, even on a hot summer day, it's a cooler surface. It's actually cooler than a wood deck. Really? I don't like some of the darker decks out there that are composites, because you walk out on them, you can hurt your, you know, the paws of your pets. Right. You can hurt yourself. And it so this really sense. makes it enjoyable. It does, because you know some of those are so hot that you don't realize that when you when you're putting them in that it's you know in the summertime when you want to be out there. Absolutely, there's, there's some downside. But this sounds like a great. This thing. is cool. What I like about these newer style decks is that that are composites. They've actually capped this, so it's yeah. sealed off. You know the old versions of like some of the treks that you saw 10, right. 15, 20 years ago. Kind of in the first version of the composites, you drip some grease from the barbecue or anything that would come down, right. tree sap, dirt, it would soak in because it was fairly porous. And then that stain was there forever. So it looked not so great. And it's not like you could refinish it. Right. And there's, you know, for maintenance wise, is there, you know, things we have to, you know, the wood decks, you're staining, you're sanding, you're sealing. But with this, you don't need to do that. Right? No, I mean, you're usually sealing a deck every couple of years in our, in our area if it's open out to the sun and the weather. So with this, this can be a 40 or 50 year material that you put down. Wow. So it's a huge difference. Now, of course, you need to do some work down below because if you don't maintain it and you don't put the right stuff down below as far as treated woods and do some of those right. tricks, then you've got a, a deck that's going to last, but maybe the framing won't. So you have to be careful with that. Right. And then I was just noticing on here, you have this kind of interesting little rubber piece on there. What is that? This is new technology out called Dexer Dry, and I love this. 
if you need to create a waterproof surface like I did on my upstairs deck here, I wanted a place where I could barbecue in, you know, those right. four or five months of the year where there's no way I'm sitting outside in a barbecue. This actually compresses in between both pieces of wood or, you know, composite, goes in that groove, and when it compresses together, you have a watertight seal. So instead yeah, of nice. having to have all those, you know, you just get all the junk in there. It could be the dirt, pine needles, leaves. Instead of that getting plugged up and being a drippy mass, this actually makes it easier to clean. I wish I would have done it on this deck. Right, because it makes sense for up above and you wouldn't think about it for below, but. That was my mistake that I right. made here. I should have put it down here because it makes it so much easier to clean. I don't get any of that junk in between the boards. It just cleans off a lot easier. Right. That would have saved me a lot of time just in regular cleaning maintenance to keep this looking good. Now, you, you have a lot of tips and tricks on, you know, <laughs> a lot of, you know, projects around the house. Tell us a little bit about your, what you do in your podcast. So my podcast around the house, are, we're actually a nationally syndicated radio show, but we have this podcast that is kind of the expanded version of that. So we have to cut it down to fit the radio, but really for the podcast, we talk about everything from healthy homes to decks to painting, anything within the house, even some musical guests sometimes. <laughs> we just want to have a good time, and then we can just teach people the right way to do things and kind of do some deep dives. We're not your usual call-in home improvement show. We like to take a subject and really dive into it and get you the answer right. so you can actually do the project. You know, if people are interested in listening to your podcast, where can they go to listen to it? Roundthehouseonline.com. And then you're on, how often do you, do you do a new topic? So we have actually about three podcasts a week. Oh, wow. And we're also on about 52 different podcast players across the world out there. So if it's a place you listen to podcasts, you'll probably find around the house. Gotcha. Well, Eric, it's been a pleasure to be out here on your deck and your patio and to learn all about the new, new decking that you've put in. So if you're looking to get out in your yard this spring and you're ready to make a change, you know, make sure you check out gardentime.tv or we'll get you over to Eric's podcast and learn all how to do it. So it's been great to be out here and let's see, you might have a little glass of wine with me that you tap to next. I think we need to dive into that. So thanks for having us, Eric. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching Garden Time today, and don't forget, tomorrow at midnight is your last chance to enter to win a $200 gift card at Garden Gallery Ironworks. And this is also your last chance to go on a Garden Time tour to Europe with Judy and I in September. And don't forget, next Saturday is our last TV show, and we would love to have you join us. You know, for more information on today's episode or any of our upcoming events, go to GardenTime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. garden time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world famous Allsmuir Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once a decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information and we'll see you in Europe. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.